Well, hi there, and welcome to another episode of Hey, What's Next? Today, we're reviewing a mini PC from a company called iProta. This little computer packs an Intel N97 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte solid state storage. At the time of purchase, I picked it up for just a tad over 130 US dollars on Amazon. For what it's packing, is this mini PC worth it? The iProta Windows 11 Home Mini PC. This is what's next. All right, as I stated in an earlier video, I have a computer problem. And one of those problems, in addition to laptops, are these little mini computers. That's my Mac Mini. 2007. This here is one of those HDMI mini PCs. This here is a two core, four thread processor, an earlier AMD. But obviously one of the big things that uh, has really rocked this channel is you guys, 20,000 views on this HP Elite Desk 705 G4. Now this, when I bought it, was about 160, 180 bucks, somewhere around there. I'll post the actual cost. But now you can buy these things for around 100 to 120 dollars. Honestly, still not a bad deal. Why would you want something like this when for what I paid 130 dollars for, something like this? This is a much newer mini PC than any of these that we're showing here. This is rocking the N97 processor. It's from a company called iProta. So why don't we go ahead and get this all cleared out and then we'll look at the box and inside the contents and start playing around with this newer N97 processor. What makes more sense? An older HP Elite desk or a newer computer that are roughly selling for the same amount of money. So let's take a look at the Proda desktop computer with Windows Home 11. So this is the uh, most interesting cover that I've seen. Uh, we have a cat over top of a computer. I appreciate cats, but I'm more of a dog person. Anyways, this is the iProta. This is how I'm going to pronounce it. You can see here that it is uh, model number MPC12P0YN, or that could be PO. Uh, it's space gray, Windows 11 Home, H UHD graphics. Again, this is an N97, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and a 512 gigabyte PCIe storage drive. So, um, what intrigued me beyond the cost is that this is an N97 processor. The N97 is definitely faster than the N100, which again sell for about the same amount of money. The N100 is a little bit more uh, power efficient uh, than the N97, but at this stage, when we're comparing it to that HP, over 100 watts when you're running the graphics card, um, you know anything less than that with this, if I can get roughly the same power, maybe it makes more sense to go with a mini PC like this. Uh, I do like how they post on the back uh, creative designing. I could see that definitely with any of the Adobe Creative Suite products. Enjoying leisure time, although uh, it's a uh, teleconferencing thing. I don't know if I would call that leisure, but maybe that's a very large family. And then working efficiently again with the speed and whatnot. You don't notice gaming on here. All right, so let's see what's on the bottom here. We got another icon here with the Windows 11 Home. So the Windows logo, dual band AC Wi-Fi. I believe this is version six. Let's go ahead and get this opened. All right, so we're just gonna take that off. I like to keep my boxes and I'm gonna keep the plastic on it. So that's just who I am. So here we got our box. Let's see, presentation wise, we love the box. Obviously the inside box, it's all white, that's fine. We have our user manual. Looks like, wow, and they pack that in there tight. Uh, we have uh, an HDMI cable, so let's put that here. And then here is our power adapter. Now, one of the things with this particular PC, 
um, compared to, let's say, this one here, which is just the AM02. Um, this was the power supply that it came with. So not only you have the power uh, and then you have the piece that goes to the wall, right? So with this one, though, we just have this little wall wart. Uh, we're looking at 12 volts, 3 amps, so it looks like a max of 36 watts for that. Uh, in comparison to just this dual core 4 thread, uh, this is 72 watts. It, this is cool. The power usage of these units have dropped significantly, and yet... The, powers, the computers themselves have gotten more powerful, so bonus on that. Uh, first impressions, this is an all plastic uh, mini PC, very hollow, very lightweight. Uh, definitely when we're comparing it to, let's say this unit, plastic top, plastic bottom, but a whole metal case here. So that's a bonus for this particular PC. Of course, if we look at the Mac Mini, including the Mac Minis that are today, this is all metal with, again, a plastic top and bottom. Here's one thing, too, that I wanted to mention. The rumor is the newer Mac Minis look like they're going to be about the size of an Apple TV. So we may see a Mac Mini come out to be roughly the same size as these two items. Tell me if you're interested in this channel acquiring a Mac Mini when it becomes available. So let's take a look at this particular PC. So we have here our headphone jack, a type C, two USB three ports. We have a CMOS reset sensor. If we turn this over, we have a TF card slot, Kensington lock. On the back, we have the vents at the top, two more USB threes, ethernet, and two HDMI ports. So on the bottom here, we have this little tab thing here. I'm gonna guess that is to take the bottom off. Again, we'll do that in a second. And Intel inside, and there's your iProta or Prada uh, logo right there. So let's take a look at the user manual. Uh, if we open this up real quick, we have our caution list, what the components were. Again, we have everything that's listed here. On the back, it explains what we got. So it does say USB 3.2 ports. Um, just a LAN RJ45. Again, don't know the speed of that. Tells you everything. It says TV or monitor. Interesting. So they're expecting you to maybe use this as like a media server of some sort. Accessing the BIOS, we can press the escape key on the keyboard. We have that reset button. We already looked at that. And then, okay, so now here are some specs. Let's see what we got. Uh, it is an Alder Lake N97 running at the 3.6 gigahertz. Windows Home is included. UHD graphics, which again, the speed of the UHD graphics on the N97 is faster than the N100. Uh, expandable hard drive. It does say that you can expand it. Now, one of the downsides that I heard about this PC is it did not come with the SATA drive connector uh, for a standard 2.5 inch drive. The micro SD card support up to one terabyte, Bluetooth 5.2, Ethernet, it just says yes. So again, doesn't really explain what it is here. All right, so that's enough about the user manual. How about we go ahead and take this apart? So once you get the four screws out, you have to remember that these are recessed in here a long way away. So again, if we happen to use the iFixit tool, uh, this gives you an idea, again, how far it sticks out. So let's see what's on the inside of this case. And it looks like, does this come out? There we go. So we're looking like we're rocking a UD Store 512 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD Gen 3 times two. So with this particular processor, it only has one stick, so it's single channel memory, it's not dual channel. So obviously to get to the other side of the device, you have four more screws. So let's put this back together, let's get it boot up, and let's see what this thing can actually do. Well, it's been a week. I've been using the iProta uh, off and on, testing different things, and I'd like to just share my results. One of the first things that I realized is that I have the ability to run the monitor from the USB-C cable. Plug that in, we'll turn it on. And using the Pixio portable monitor, you'll see here in just a moment, it'll boot up. And here we go, running the monitor off of the USB-C 
connection. I don't know if this is Thunderbolt or what version of USB-C it is, but it does work. So there's that. If you use the iProta Mini PC N97 Intel processor, the monitor works. Let's move on to some screen captures of the device itself and things that I've found throughout the week. Let's first take a look at the BIOS. To get to the BIOS, the user manual is incorrect. It says, press the delete key. You really need to press the F12 key. I'm not gonna go through all of these. Just wanted to go through each of the pages to show you what's available. Looks like it's mostly unlocked. Let's first take a look at geek bench numbers. So you're gonna see that based off of these numbers, we have a 1263 for single core and 3085 for multi. Again, four cores, these are all efficiency cores, no performance cores in this PC. You should see speedier results in single core tasking, so web, word processing, Excel spreadsheets, so on and so forth. So based on what I've seen, I, I, I find this very snappy. Let's look at the compute scores. 5801 is what this iPro to mini PC with the Intel UHD graphics scores. I'm gonna sort the compute score column here. It definitely scores on the lower side. Let's look at YouTube playback. 4K, we're gonna go full screen here in a moment, but I got stats for nerds up. And we're gonna restart the play here. And you'll see that there are just some minor drop frames at the beginning. Uh, but overall, playback seems smooth. If I didn't have stats for nerds up, I would have no clue that we're dro dropping frames. So, good. All right, right now we're looking at our task manager within Windows 11. You can see that we are running the Intel N97. Currently, right now, the base speed, 2 gigahertz. We're running at around 2.4. We're using about 20 watts of power right now. Look at memory real quick. So it's uh, 3,200 mega transfers per second. Here's our GPU. The Intel UHD graphics utilization right now is roughly 2%. Well, let's change that. Okay, so here we are. We're running Unige in heaven, uh, 1080p. Uh, the quality right now is set, I believe, to high. So you're looking at frame rates at roughly 12 uh, frames a second. If we drop this down to low, Let's see what this looks like. All right, so now we're getting a frame rate of roughly mid 20s right now, so that's not too bad. You can do some 3D gaming. I would say definitely some of the older games would work on this. If I would go to, let's say, 720p. And now we're getting frame rates up in the 40s and 50s. So. Again, depending on the game style that you want, if you're hitting around mid-20s to 30s, you'd probably be fine with 1080 low. Uh, if you really want higher frame rates, you are definitely going to have to go 720p on this machine. Let's look at some of the other benchmarks that I've done. I used Passmark. Uh, we got a rating of 1496.3. Comparing that to the HP, we were in the mid-3000s with that machine. What about the speed of the drive itself? These are the speeds that I got. Uh, again, this was right out of the box after I set this up. I haven't done any testing since. They're okay speeds, again, for what it's to be used for. I think this is totally fine. And it definitely has some snappiness to it. I mean, you can see that when I close Windows and if I double click something, it doesn't take too long for it to open up. So that's our Geekbench numbers that we talked about earlier. So here are our core temps. Uh, we're going to see right now we're running at roughly uh, 58 degrees Celsius. I am hearing the fan, so let me just get to the fan real quick. This is what it sounds like. While it's noticeable, I would say that it's not terrible. I can definitely live with this. It's not the vacuum cleaner engine that we get from the HP. Office applications. Here I have a test document using LibreOffice. If I double click this, this should boot right up fairly quickly. And there you go, there's our letter. You can scroll through it. Again, for office work, this is perfect. 
Where it does start falling flat on its face is using stuff like, let's say, DaVinci Resolve. If we go back and scan through the video, you're going to notice that I could scan through it, but it's not doing well as far as showing the preview here on the monitor. It's a little herky-jerky. Now, if we go back to looking at a export, you're going to notice that a 1080p export, two minute long video, it took two minutes, 31 seconds. To put that in the comparison, this same video, this updated version on the HP Elite desk took two minutes and seven seconds. And for those who want to run Linux, I have Linux Mint running on this PC. Seems to run fine. I get the audio. Uh, Ethernet seems to be working. And YouTube playback actually seems to be uh, better than what I was getting out of Windows. So let's go to my final thoughts on the iProta N97 Mini PC. All right, after a week of use, this mini PC from iProta has plenty of strengths and some weaknesses. Let's start with the positives. It's small. I mean, look how tiny this thing is. Mini PCs are awesome, right? Size of my face. This computer doesn't take up much desk space. And if you stick it behind a monitor, it takes up almost no space at all. The included 16 gigabytes of memory and half terabyte of storage are a bonus when compared to other mini PCs with the M97 processor. Those generally range from $130 to $180 uh, in that price range. While faster RAM and storage might provide a bit more speed, the out-of-the-box solution is great for most users. Another bonus when compared to that HP Elite Desk I reviewed a few weeks ago is the fan noise. While I can hear the fan in this thing, it is by no means as loud as that HP, which sounds like a jet taking off sometimes. Don't get me wrong, this thing does get a bit noisy when completing processor heavy tasks, but I didn't, it didn't bother me during those times. So here are a few of my negatives after playing around with this. Uh, the first thing is that it's plastic. So it's a little disappointing doesn't have that premium feel, but I don't believe that's what iProto was shooting for. Removing the bottom to access the RAM and the storage was difficult because of the access holes where the screws were at, I mean, they're way in there. So if you don't have screwdrivers uh, that are long enough, removing the screws can definitely be a problem. However, I give bonus points for not having the screws hidden behind the rubber feet which I've seen on several reviews of mini PCs on YouTube. Lastly, the N97 UHD graphics hinder the device's gaming and video creation potential. Um, that's where the HP Elite Desk will shine. It's a lot better at that. While video playback uh, up to 4K is fine, you shouldn't buy this if you're expecting to do video games or any sort of video creation. Based on my Unigen Heaven benchmark, you could game at a lower resolution like 720, but jumping to 1080, even at low quality, this computer does struggle. So if you're looking for a mini PC, this one for my Proto is great for most users who need the basics like internet, office productivity, video playback, and like gaming. So that's my look at the iProta mini PC with Windows 11 Home. If you like this episode, Please take a moment and give me a thumbs up if to have my channel appear in your feed click the subscribe button and bell notification i'll have it somewhere here on the screen as always thank you for taking the time to watch this video it's greatly appreciated in the meantime feel free to watch one of my other videos uh, that i'll put either here and here uh, until next time you know i look forward to seeing you again for another episode of hey What's next?